Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of SpinCast today. We are back on the topic of collegiate esports, the great scene, uh, really developing it and growing it um, on this platform and really giving everybody out there um, a method to spread their um, awareness and knowledge about their program as well. So without further ado, this is Josh Sides. He is the head esports coach at Winthrop University. So Josh, go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell us what sparked everything in esports. Where did that passion start? And how did that take you to being the head esports coach um, at one of the top universities for esports um, in the country? Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, um, honestly, my passion for esports started young. Um, you know, I played a lot of video games growing up. Um, you know, video games are a really good escapism, um, that type of stuff. Um, you know, I had a, a lot of siblings too, so I'm a competitive individual, and so I needed to be the best. I was always looking up like you know, strategies and stuff like that, uh, you know, for Nintendo 64 games and stuff like that, just so I could beat my siblings and, and always be the best. And, um, so that's kind of where the passion began. Um, when I was around 13, I got a, we got AOL. So we got 56 K internet mm -hmm. at Starcraft, uh, brood war. And that's, uh, that was my first real like competitive online game was, playing um starcraft online i played a lot of the custom games i didn't really get in the 1v1s a lot until college but um that's kind of where my uh passion for online gaming came from and um from there it just developed uh through the years all my friends you know very passionate about gaming and then one day um my freshman year in college my friend john michael um uh, and i were were um he happened to find the Korean brood war scene and we were playing brood war, you know, pretty casually at the time. And, um, he was like, we should, you, you know, they have this like on, this is on like TV over in Korea. Like they mm -hmm. play video games on TV for people to watch. And it was like, no, there's, there's no way. Like, that's so crazy. Uh, that's such like an alien idea. And this is, you know, over 10 years is like, 12 13 years ago but um like the brood war scene in korea like we tuned in and there were big crowds and signs and cheering and the kind of stuff you see now that you didn't expect to see you know at the time you know people in the you know fangirls in the crowd like freaking out and, and then you know come to find out like there's a you know in like seoul in downtown seoul there's like a big billboard of boxer this like you know michael jordan this like god of starcraft and i was just like hooked that like holy crap this is a uh, this is something obviously in my mind i was like this is never going to happen in america this is mm -hmm. never going to happen outside of korea but this is amazing i'm going to get up every morning at 4 a.m and watch this um you know and then i became really enthralled with the like analytics of it and 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 um you know team liquid was a good resource at the time they had you know their website for like keeping up with every single like statistic and 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 all of that stuff. And I've, I've always been a sports nerd. So that kind of translated over, you know, I'm highly into like sports analytics and stuff like that. So, you know, being a big sports fan and then having my second passion of video games become something that I could kind of put that same type of, um, you know, um, like analytics and stats mm -hmm. and stuff too, um, mm -hmm. was just totally awesome. Yeah. Um, seeing you know and then you know put it out of mind like this is something that's never going to come over this is a very korean phenomenon and all that and then you know a couple years later um i'm in college and, and league of legends is doing you know the world Cha season two world championship in la and it's selling out you know mm -hmm. in in minutes these like giant arenas and stuff like that and it's like okay we have arrived Yep. <laughs> um, you know, it, it is, it has become a thing over here, but you know, even at that time, you know, competing in like local tournaments and, and, you know, going from college land to college land or whatever, like that, that was all, you know, all we had, there wasn't really mm -hmm. like a collegiate scene, so to speak. There wasn't, you know, anything like that, uh, like we have now. And honestly, you know, when I graduated, I just thought, okay, that's, uh, you know, that, it is what it is. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know collegiate esports was a thing. And then I got into the working world, 
um, you know, I still followed esports um, pretty passionately and, and mm -hmm. did kind of like analytics on the side as kind of like a hobby. And um, then I happened to see a Reddit post about someone getting a scholarship to play esports. And I was like, that's literally insane. And then I Googled it and then I saw, okay, these, you know, 11 different colleges are hiring for esports head coach. Okay. Coaching something I've always been passionate about. Um, you know, my background's always been in leadership, uh, mm -hmm. all through college, my working world, um, you know, all of that stuff. Um, I've always, you know, had a passion for leadership, for team building, recruiting, um, and then just, you know, statistical analysis, stuff like that. Um, and then all of my role models are coaches. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, one of my favorite people in the world is, uh, Phil Jackson. And, um, you know, I, to be able to have an opportunity to coach, I, you know, I was sitting at a corporate job and, and just thought, you know, if I don't shoot my shot, like, you know, what's the worst these schools could say no, or, you know, exactly. you know come in for an interview, you know, and I felt like if I could get in for an interview, I can make it happen. Um, mm -hmm. at a couple of interviews, uh, the place that really stood out to me as, as being a great opportunity was St. Ambrose and, uh, they offered me the position and that's how I got into collegiate esports. Awesome. Awesome. That's a fantastic path. And I had something similar. <laughs> I remember starting off and just literally playing Halo split screen yeah. with my buddies, you know, back in middle school. Um, and then same thing, you go on Reddit and like, esports mm -hmm. arena what is this yeah, you turn what? on the uh twitch right and you're like whoa like this is something massive and then from there it just took off and you know here we are now twitch um, when that came along that yeah. was like the big i think that's like one of the things that like really moved it into the mainstream like mm -hmm. twitch and justin tv and all of those like old streaming sites back in the day as even azubu and like all of those because mm -hmm. like when i first started watching starcraft you had to find like a like a link and run it through a like a like like a VLC player and like mm -hmm. all of these like mm -hmm. weird streaming, like you, you really had to try. And now with Twitch, you know, it's just like click one button and I'm watching it and it's, uh, it's lag free and like all of this stuff. You don't have to worry about mm -hmm. syncing up the video and the audio. Exactly. Oh my God. So easy. It's, it's just, have it so easy, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Back <laughs> in the day, especially even just playing split screen and all like the yeah. audio camera cables and the games and then right. with old Xboxes and they red ring and all that kind of stuff. Oh, Kids God. today, they just press one button, TV's on, yeah. Xbox is on, PlayStation's on, whatever. <laughs> um, and then you play. And like, Are yeah. we boomers, Kyle? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> The, the kids today think we are. I'm like, I think they're a little bit older than us. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, um, just absolutely love that. So looking at uh, Winthrop specifically, we were talking a little bit before the podcast started. Um, you guys just opened up in August, the esports mm -hmm. specifically. Obviously, the university has yep. been around longer. Um, take us through that setup process, right? What goes into creating and then developing a specific esports program at a, that collegiate level? Um, talk us about the specifics of the program itself. You know, are you university supported, student led, mm -hmm. club led? Obviously, not exactly student led. Uh, just talk us through some of those details um, and give us that good picture of what your program offers. Yeah, for sure. Well, I was at, um, you know, when I was at St. Ambrose, I saw that Winthrop was hiring um, and that they were going to be, you know, one of the first, the, the, what I saw the like news article was varsity athletics, es you know, esports first varsity athletics, esports uh, to sponsor a team. And I thought, wow, that is awesome. Like that's going to be some trivia question down, down the road. Mm -hmm. Like what was the first um, varsity athletics uh, program to add esports to their athletics program? And mm -hmm. it was, it's Winthrop in case you're wondering what the answer <laughs> is. Um, and I saw it was an opportunity to get back closer to home. It was an opportunity to come to a university that had a lot more resources to work with. Um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity for me. So um, although it was starting with a little bit of a short lead time, I guess, starting in March and needing to have the whole thing up and running by August was a little bit stressful, but yeah. um, it was something that I thought that I could handle given um, I had started St. Ambrose and everything that I learned from that. Um, and, you know, basically it was, you know, working every day, recruiting, um, getting quotes for, um, 
you know, computers and, and facilities pieces and, and things like that. Um, it's just working through all of that stuff. Um, you know, um, basically finding the space for the team. We had a space for the team that they, that originally that the school had set aside that I, when I came in, I noticed that I didn't think it was going to work. So we yeah. had to find a new space for the team. And, um, you know, we ended up having a, a pretty great lab space, yeah. uh, avail come available. So, um, and then it's, you know, we recruited, all of our, you know, high level players in and um, got everybody on campus in August, got rolling with fairly minimal hiccups. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we happened to come out of the gates hot, uh, yeah. a lot hotter than a lot of people expected, I think. Yeah. Um, awesome. you know, I have high expectations for mm -hmm. us and any team that I build up, but, um, you know, I don't think that anyone expected this but that's kind of what I told Winthrop and what I told um you know Dr. Halpin the athletic director when we started mm -hmm. I if I'm coming here I'm going to build something that's nationally recognized that's going to be you know considered among the best and it's you know we will dominate on yeah. a regional landscape we will you know attempt to dominate on a national landscape for sure um, and we did well i mean our first year we had uh you know we were ranked as high as fourth on espn's rankings for league of legends um <clears throat> our tespa team finished in the varsity semifinals in the fall um and we were undefeated in the spring it's about to start back up uh yeah. in, a, in two weeks which is interesting yeah uh, we'll see how that goes but um you know we we had good teams for league and good uh, you know, we had a good team for league and a good team for overwatch. Um, next year we're adding rocket league, we're adding Valorant, we're adding, uh, smash. So, um, and I, I've told every recruit that I've talked to for those that, you know, look at what we did this year, these, mm -hmm. you know, might seem like unreasonable expectations for a first year team, but this is my ex. you know, greatness exactly. is, is the expectation. So, um, if you come in here and you want to play here, expect to you know need to grind expect to need to uh be a competitive individual be someone who wants to um you know achieve things you know at that national level um that's yeah. that's the culture we're building so for sure for sure I absolutely love to hear it and see that success so mm -hmm. readily that's always great to see you said it might be a little ambitious but you yeah do. So that doesn't mean you can't do it again, right? Especially exactly. for those new incoming recruits. Hopefully we return to that normalcy in the fall. So all of that is still possible, but you know, who knows with what's going on in the world right now. Um, but kind of going off some of those things, what does that competitive grind look like at Winthrop specifically? You know, what's that kind of day-to-day -day training mentality, practice routines, um, how often you get in that computer lab, the arena, the facility that you guys built. Uh, just what are those day-to-day -day looks like for those students that wonder like, hey, how much time is involved? How much am I expected of? Um, just kind of give us a little a couple of details there. Yeah, our um, well, our players first of all have 24-hour access to the lab for better or worse. Um, you know, that's that's one part of the the uh, recruiting process is figuring out if we're bringing in people who are mature enough to to utilize that well and still be able to prioritize you know school and and getting good grades and and going to their classes and they're not staying up till four in the morning and sleeping through their 9am class and, and yep. stuff like that. So they have the means and ability to basically, um, you know, tailor their practice, personal practice and, and all of that to how, whatever level they want. Um, basically coming into the year, we have an initial meeting. These are our goals. These are our, you know, this is what we want to get out of this semester. This is what we want to get out of the year. Um, what does everyone commit to, you know, work-wise, practice-wise to uh, getting to those goals? And, you know, we go with the, um, you know, the level set of, you know, what the person with the lowest level of commitment is, is willing to commit to, mm -hmm. but we only recruit, you know, really hungry, really competitive people. So they're all, you know, wanting to commit to working uh, really hard um we probably scrim 
four to five times a week. Um, and that's, um, you know, lower than some schools, uh, lower than most schools that, you know, you would consider like the top five or top 10, they probably scrim, you know, every day a week, sometimes double mm-hmm. blocks or whatever. But, um, we like to have that balance. Uh, it's important to not burn people out, not, you know, churn through, you know, players passion for the game. And, and, um, so basically, yeah, we will, we'll commit to what the players are willing to commit to. And Mm -hmm. we go from that. Basically we, we set our expectations. We go from there now. Um, that's, you know, that's the expectations and we fully expect people to buy in at that, you know, when we level set that, that bar, there's no going under that bar. We might try over that bar, say like if it's a week before a big game, we might scrim every day. And that's Mm -hmm. not, you know, me forcing kids to get in the lab. That's these guys really, really want to work. And, um, you know, they, they want to scrim, they want to do these things. So, um, um, that's kind of what, that's, that's how we handle it here. And I know that's different than how a lot of schools handle it. Most schools have like, these are our set practice days. These are, you know, our set practice times. Um, for me, it's a lot more, uh, democratic, I guess, or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, letting the team kind of going at their own pace, basically. Yeah giving them a little more freedom so they can yeah. have that balance. Right. Right. So like, exactly. You know, one of the players is a five o'clock class, right? Well, okay. Let's practice at eight tonight. Yeah. So exactly. That, that's exactly what or, I think. You know, paper and exam, exactly. things like that. I mean, those, those things come up. You can't be like fully rigid on, on exactly. that kind of stuff. Or, especially in college. I mean, college is yeah. probably the most fluid time, especially that balancing of your time and work-life balance. It's the most fluid and changes every day. I remember yeah. when I was in college, it's, Every day is different. You might have only two hours of work one day, and then you're in the library all day the next week. Yep. Um, so and, kind and of crazy giving, there. Giving kids that like college experience too. Like a lot of you know, if you're at a school where you're practicing, you know, if you're you're going to class four hours a day, and then you're practicing for six hours a day, or or you know whatever, how do you have time to do anything like college related? Like exactly. If you're at college. <clears throat> have you need to have the college experience too? Mm-hmm. Like that's uh that's part of it and i think that's you know we we i think that's part of our culture i think that's why mm-hmm. we are able to succeed the way that we are um just because our, i feel like we um you know we don't work players to the bone we don't mm-hmm. um you know grind yeah. super hard and you know and we do have kids who will come in and and play solo queue or whatever grind until you know 2 a.m or whatever that's that person's prerogative i'm not gonna yeah. make, match that though you know? exactly no i love to see it because like you said that experience is yeah. part of college life and you have to have it because i always say if, especially when you're competing in any kind of competition it doesn't have to be esports particularly there's outside of the game and inside of the game and if you're always in you're going to burn out right you're gonna be like yep. this isn't fun anymore i wake up and it's a drag right i don't want to go to practice but you need to wake up and want to go to practice want to go enjoy college and then if you're right. i think if you're in that mindset you're certainly better set up set up for success right so i absolutely love to see that um i did a lot of things came up and some of those uh points you had one thing i want to highlight as kind of the last point we have before we run out of time is recruiting mm-hmm. um so you kind of hinted at it um i want you to expand a little bit more is that you recruit the person right you want them to have the right mentality yes. the right work ethic all of that so speak to that and how you address recruiting in a holistic fashion, so to say, um, rather than just, you know, go in and getting the number one player in the world or whatnot. Well, you know, I learned a lot from my first semester at Ambrose. I, I, my initial thought when recruiting, um, you know, was purely from a, you know, analytical mindset of just bring in the best players, bring in the top players at each position. And obviously you're going to win everything you smash or whatever. Well, we ended up with a lot of people with not the right mentalities, not the right attitudes. And at the end of the semester, we ended up losing our Overwatch team returned one of six players. Our League of Legends team returned, you know, one of five players. We literally like had no retention because these guys, you know, had giant egos and and they Mm -hmm. were fighting or they weren't good at school or, you know, this and that. And by the end of the semester, all of these kids were, you know, to the wind, basically. I mean, they, they didn't want, they didn't want to be a part of the culture that we had at the time. They didn't, you know, they weren't the right fit for the culture that we were building. And that's when I learned that 
the most important thing is getting people with the right attitude, getting people with the right mindset. Um, I can tell from probably from one call with a person if they're good fit or not from like Mm -hmm. the mindset or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, mechanics are, are mechanics. Like they show up in a lot of ways. Like you can have a tryout or, you know, you can see mechanics on someone's, you know, solo queue or whatever, but someone's attitude, that's something that you need to, that's the thing that you need to know when you're recruiting a player. Um, Like I had a player who, you know, I was trying to get a call set up with and um, you know, it, it was, you know, back and forth, like one word answers from him. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, it was very obvious that, that, you know, he he either had too big of an ego where he felt like, you know, he was bigger than the process or whatever, or, you know, he just wasn't super interested. Um, There's a lot of like, you know, things that you think would be common knowledge that, that, you know, high schoolers and, and stuff making these recruiting profiles or putting themselves out there don't realize like, Mm -hmm. you know, if your name is, you know, something just awful, like your your friends might think it's funny. (laughs) Exactly. The recruiter does not think it's funny. (laughs) I'm not even going to reach out to you. probably. Exactly. So I mean, like you might be the most talented kid in the world. You're probably not going to hear from a single college. Exactly. So, um, yeah. You know, for for the for the people out there interested in being recruited, I mean, make sure that you understand that your Twitter, your Twitch, like every all of your public facing stuff, um, you know, that that's representative of you as a person and that's what you know, people like myself are are looking at to figure out um you know, if you're a good fit and that doesn't Mm -hmm. mean like hide that stuff away, set it private or whatever. That means like strive to be, you know, a good person, a good teammate, a good, you know, have that good mentality, uh, mindfulness, you know, that if, if, uh, if a player tells me that they, you know, are interested in mindfulness or they, you know, they do mindfulness meditation, stuff like that. I'm, I'm immediately, I know this guy has a good mentality. So, Mm -hmm. you know, pro tip out there, get some do some mindfulness meditation uh you know follow that you know as well as you could that's like one of the most helpful things you can do in esports mm-hmm. in my opinion um you know th- those kind of yeah. things are really important yeah couldn't agree more and that's exactly what i kind of i tell a lot of uh potential high school recruits is hey you have a holistic picture of everything on social media you press tweet you press go live everyone anyone can find it and if you're hiding it that's even more suspicious so, you know, having that great persona out there and it being true to yourself will go a long way. Um, you know, trying to fake it or hide it, you're going to be seen right yeah. through when you step on campus. So exactly. I absolutely love it. Or so before time, we do those calls. Yeah, when, we do, when we do like a Discord call or whatever, you know, it, it's easy to spot fake. You exactly. Know, you know, so. Exactly. You know, tweets are just words at a face value. They have meaning. Um, but then once we talk to you, we're going to know way beyond we're going to know the true thing so i'd love to see it um we do have time for one more quick question before we wrap up um you kind of touched on it there for some advice for high school students um but more specifically what should they keep in mind as they like train or practice um as just one little tidbit of advice that when they're really sitting down to get better is there anything that has stood out to you and your years of experience that would really help these high school students um reach that next level as they're pursuing um, a scholarship or a spot at a collegiate program there's one thing that i see a lot from recruiting you know high school players especially younger high school players is that um you know pick one pick one like genre pick one specialty like if if you're you know plat in five different games like that's great and there's probably a school for you but you're not for my program um and Mm -hmm. i I don't you know that that kind of limits your your um you know you you think it broadens your marketability but it actually limits it um it's take it in the same mindset that you would if you were you know a pitcher or whatever and you know don't go play you know football or or, you know tennis Mm -hmm. or whatever like you're gonna burn out your elbow doing something you know getting good at something that you don't even need and and similarly to these you know 
different sports require different muscle groupings and stuff like that. Different games require different muscle memory. Different games require different, um, you know, specialization, um, things like that. So if there's one piece of advice, I, I would say um, specialize, pick something, pick a game or pick it, at least pick a genre that you're interested in and, um, you know, grind that. And there's a lot of tools out there for basically every genre. Um, you know, if you're interested in getting better, um, for the FPS guys, you know, there's Kovacs aim trainer or aim labs, and, you know, those, those type of things will help you immensely, um, to improve in, in pretty much any FPS game. Um, for yeah. league, it's more getting, you would need to get individual coaching and, and things like that. But those type of things exist out there like pro guides and, and uh, those type of, um, you know, uh, resources, but basically pick a, pick a lane and, uh, and, and pursue it. If you're passionate about uh, going pro or you're passionate about, you know, at least getting a scholarship to do um, that one game collegiate, um, you know, Mm -hmm. specialize in it and it might it might suck for um you know all all my friends are playing uh you know all my friends are playing uh valorant but mm -hmm. i you know i want to i want to play league or whatever i want to go pro in league or i want to you know achieve you know collegiate get a collegiate scholarship in league mm -hmm. well you know keep working on league if that's what you're passionate about not to say like don't take breaks or play other games yeah, for sure like don't grind five games at a time that that's completely worthless in my opinion exactly exactly no to totally agree right pick that role in that game or pick that specific genre of game and grind it definitely great advice for everybody and, out there listening look into mindfulness it, it will yeah. help your mental it will help uh you mm -hmm. know being tilt being tilt proof is like one of the absolute like greatest things you can attain in esports mm -hmm. if you are tilt proof like you've just increased your like ability to win games like by a phenomenal amount so yeah i couldn't literally that uh, that's something that i'm very passionate in is that mental yep. wellness and balance especially even physical like make sure you get the right sleep the right nutrition all that kind of yes. stuff all and of that people skip over in esports so much and i say look at traditional sports right look at when the guys in the field get tilted right they don't call it tilted yeah. when they play football they're frustrated they're angry mm -hmm. well they're gonna start overthrowing the ball missing yep. blocks and then the entire team falls apart exact memory, same thing in esports and and that, having a short memory and exactly in regular sports what they call it like a kicker you mm -hmm. know if he over kicks to the left you know he's gonna overcorrect to the right now he's gonna miss to the right you need exactly. to have a short, you know yep you have to have that balance and just be mindful. Like failure is going to happen and it's how you come back from failure. Even if that's, you know, you miss your shot or a lost round or a lost championship. It's how you come back is what defines that long-term success and that overarching yep. career. Couldn't agree more. So we are unfortunately out of the time. I uh, would love to talk to you some more, but maybe for a future podcast for sure. Uh, but real quick, let us know where we can find you, reach out to you um, and the Winthrop uh, esports program as well. Yep. We're uh, at Winthrop Esports on Twitter for the program. I'm at WinUBo on Twitter as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's where you can find us. Awesome. Like I always say, never hesitate to reach out to anybody in the esports Absolutely. world, especially in that coaching directing role. The we all want to sit down. Yeah, yep. exactly. We all want to sit down and talk to you, um, and we're excited to, for sure. Yep. So, yeah, Josh, thanks for joining us today. Fantastic discussion on a number of different topics. Um, and hopefully we can get you back on the show in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. For everybody out there, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay plugged in. <laughs>